thanks very much. Um, well, I, you know, the parties that met and said they are forming a coalition, and then you say they are seven parties. Some of those parties, I was seeing them for the first time. Uh, I mean, I've been in the space for some time now, and I will know um, some of these parties. So I, I really don't know um, if there are parties like that. The IFP is already having problems about that, uh, where certain leaders of the IFP distance themselves from that uh, coalition. Then you remain with uh, the DA and um, Action SA. And the DA and Action SA is Helen Zile and uh, Mampela Rampela kiss. That's what they did. They, they, they made them kiss each other and then killed Mampela Rampela. And that's the same direction Mashaba uh, is taking. I mean, you listen to Mashaba speaking, you, you'll think it's a man who has lost his mind. He doesn't even have a sense of what is really transpiring around him because he speaks against his own conscience. So those, those are Oppenheimer parties. Why must we say there is a measure between DA and Asian SA? Because they are Oppenheimer um, uh, parties. The DA is, far, is given money by that lady of the Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm forgetting her name. Mary or something, and then uh, the male one uh, gives the the action essay. So they all balance them like this, and that's what you have. There is no any coalition of anything. It's uh, the Oppenheimers playing with the minds of our people, uh, uh, and we must not allow that. Uh, it must be exposed for what it is. It's a kiss between DA. Stein Yezen and uh, Herman Mashaba. They are kissing each other. The same way uh, uh, Helen Zile kissed Mampela Rampil. And then Mampela Rampila died from that poisonous kiss <laughs> hmm? with poisoned uh, thin lips of Helen. We, well, who said we, we don't have a problem, really? We never said we are forming a party to work with anyone. Once you form a party, you are on your own. You form, because we could have joined the DA. We could have joined the IFP or anything of that sort. To choose to form a party is because you looked around and do not found anything that represent what you stand for. And therefore chose to take your own path. This is a path chosen by us. It's not chosen by the coalition of the DA. It's not chosen by the ANC. We chose this. We chose to be on our own. That's why we are not called EFF Plus or EFF Edition. Uh-uh. We are not anything of that sort. We are independent. We shall stand elections as an independent organization. We will win elections as an independent organization. We will lose elections as an independent organization and accept the outcome with honor and acceptance that says to our people, we understand your message and we'll do better next time. We have no problem at all. Palapala Pala report really just one sentence. The, I don't know why they say uh, 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 Galeka, Koleka, is she, when they say public protector's office, they also mention Koleka, Galek. But when you talk about the Reserve Bank, you don't mention Lisija Khanya. Everybody is consistent in saying Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank, but Lisija is not being mentioned. It's Lisija who created this mess, who has converted the Reserve Bank into a protection of one man. Is Galeka because it's a woman? Her name can be called with loose like that. You can call an institution and even call her name. There's no problem there. But this side, it's a male. And because there is a male who's leading the Reserve Bank, we can't call his name. The Reserve Bank report that was 
advocated for by Lesija Hanyao. It's a fallacy and its intention is to undermine that institution and protect one individual. Lesija Hanyao says, there is no formal transaction. What is formal? Because Ndabanyoni produced a, a receipt. There is a receipt that there was a transaction. The president himself said it, that there was a transaction. You, journalists, went to interview a man who was wearing Gucci and all of that in Dubai, who said, I came to buy the buffaloes. Three. Lesi Jahanyao just decide in one day to destroy all of his good legacy in defense of one man. In defense of one man. They say there was no uh, formal uh, uh, transaction. And then colleague at this side says, no, there was a formal transaction uh, and all of that, everything is above board. Then the Reserve Bank says, no, these people are tax compliant. There is no problem. Everything has been accounted for. What formality must we look for again? So, a, a, a Lesija destroyed the image of that institution. Lesija destroyed his legacy. Lesija destroyed everything he stood for. It is Lesija who is at the center of destroying the good image of the Reserve Bank. And he must be called by his name. Why are you scared of Lesija? What is so special about Lesija? It's him for, 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 uh, for career opportunism because he hopes to be a finance minister one day. He hopes to travel the same uh, path that Tito Mboweni traveled. He compromises the image, the good standing of the Reserve Bank. His name, Leseja Hanao, must go into history as a man who destroyed one of the good institutions of our country. And in, uh, Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank. Lesija's name is not being called. I've been observing this. That when it comes to the public protector, Koleka's name is called. When it comes to SARS, uh, 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 SARS has cleared that uh, Kisveter's name is not being called. When it comes to the Reserve Bank, uh, Lesija's name is not being called. Males are being treated differently from females led institutions. We are not going to be part of that patriarchal arrangement. Uh, count us out of that. My brother, the future in the EFF is not a position. Why when you're being removed from a position, you say, I just said in the statement, they remain members of the EFF and continue to contribute. That's your future. That's my future. The future is not a position. So we remove people from positions. You say, do they have future? What are you saying? We did not expel them. They are members of the EFF. In the EFF, we are not going to allow uh, opportunism of the highest order. So please, uh, 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 you can be guaranteed, if they want to remain in the EFF, they are more, that's why we didn't take them to D.C. The D.C. may well decide not to find them guilty, the D.C. might find them guilty and expel them or suspend them. And that will destroy their future in the EFF. In the protection of their future, we said, let's take a political decision which is allowed by the constitution of the EFF to recall. Because those positions they hold are the EFF positions. You are mandated by the EFF at any time the EFF can recall you, including me. So I, 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 I don't understand what, what is this future. You ever, if, if the future is positions, uh, then I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested. Um, well, and, 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 and removing them from positions and having them remain in the organization is part of the rehabilitation. It's part of saying to them, you still need to learn more and have an appreciation maybe we prematurely promoted you into position of responsibility and you are not ready. Let's prepare you uh, and then we'll consider you uh, uh, going forward. Um, how can a man or a woman
who couldn't get one bus disrupt my election campaign. One. 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 How can that person disrupt the election campaign? He has demonstrated he's got no capacity to do anything. We are removing SG 210, 210 public representatives. And we do so unashamedly out of 1,200. 1,200 public representatives were removing 210. We remain with 990 good members of the EFF, the servant of the people, who are ready to respond to the call at any time. Don't tell me about lazy, dead woods. I have no time for dead woods. I have no time for uh, staff riders. We have no capacity. Whether they've been with us for too long, it means nothing if you can't perform the simplest task. You know, one of you is very sympathetic that you, maybe the MPs, we know them, we may not know the others. There is an MP who until this morning was still lying that she paid uh, for a bus. The SG went and said, okay, let me sit down and understand this went through with her only to find that this MP submitted a quotation and thought that we're fools, will confuse the quotation for an invoice. And the quotation is dated 25 July. You can see this MP has never done anything for five months. On the eve of the rally realizes, hey, there's a problem coming here. She then gets a quotation and then Today, this morning, she gives us a quotation as a proof of payment. You, you, want to, you want to serve with such people? These are the people you want to serve with. Better few, but better. Not fraud. Fraud, until this morning. A fraud was still trying to defraud the organization. And not coming clean and open and apologize and say, no, uh, will do what the organization is asking us to do. There's no DA which is going to dissolve any Johannes back here. Eh? There's no DA that will dissolve. If uh, Stonehazen's life is dissolved, he must not think that that's going to happen in Johannesburg. It's not going to happen, that one. Johannesburg is stable. Johannesburg has got a mayor and the MMCs are up to task. A lot of those MMCs are up to task. They are trying their level best with limited resources and difficulties that were confronted with in Johannesburg. You know, you comrades of the media, you're not covering the job of those comrades. You're not showing what those comrades are doing good. All of a sudden, there's a media blackout on MMCs. Queen Elizabeth, beauty contest. cover. Covered Mara, our comrades are not being covered because they are living amongst our people. Look at the MMC of public safety and what he's doing in Johannesburg. And tell me if there's anyone in the history of that department who can ever match that MMC. Look at what our MMC of health is doing in Johannesburg. And compare. Some of you for sure you even know for the first time that there's actually MMC of health in Johannesburg. Through our MMC. But that is not being covered by the media because it's a good governance of the EFF. Now the DA says we can't work with the EFF. The ANC says we can't work with the, with the EFF and all of that. No one is asking them a question. Where did the EFF do wrong? Where? We are now in government. Where did the EFF do wrong? Show us. Snuggis Galala says the EFF is not a law-abiding organization. Yeah. You don't ask him a question, why are they still a registered political party if they are not a law-abiding organization? 
Because law abiding means compliance to the constitution. If you don't comply with the constitution, you will not be registered as a political party. You take that as a gospel truth and walk away. Gandhi has got personal reasons behind what he's saying. Why? The MMC of finance in Ikurulene is engaged in Siatrima, a program where they switch off illegal connection by big business and industries in Ikurulene. And then to enhance revenue for that municipality, close for those businesses that are not paying their electricity bills. Where are you to cover that? But if it was a, a white mayor, that one of Tswan, what is his name? Brink. If it was Brink, it me, you are going to be following him because he's a white man. A black government that is delivering to its people, look at waste collection in Ikurulene has improved to a point where the DA complained that when we're in government, we're sabotaged, the trucks were not unleashed. Look, now their trucks are unleashed into communities to go and deal with waste management. The potholes in Mogali City are being passed. You went to cover Cyril Ramaphosa patching a gravel road. Are it's patching a pothole. But here is an MMC in Mogali City who's patching real potholes and ensuring that there is rehabilitation of the roads in Mogali. No, that is not being covered. The EFF can't be trusted. What did they do? The only thing they are scared of, both the ANC and the DA, is that the EFF will do what they said they will do if you give them an opportunity. Go and check us. We, we are open for scrutiny. Go and check us everywhere. Everywhere. Don't only check us. Report our work. Report the good we are doing for our people. Report it. In Etequin, we called the ANC to concede and accept the insourcing of security guard and the cleaners. Now, it's an EFF policy. We are navigating it even when we don't have the majority. To make sure that it becomes the resolution of councils. What is the problem with the EFF? The problem with the EFF is that it will do what it said it will do. And that's why the ANC Nikuruleni was caught screaming and kicking. Saying to the ANC leadership, let's get out of this relationship. We don't want this. The ANC asked why. They said they are suffocating us. They are leading a debate and implementation of community development and uh, service delivery. In Ikurulein, there is no one who can, that person who complains like that is a spoiled bread. There's no one who can say, I reported a sewer blockage and it is now more than 24 hours without a resolution. When a sewer blockage gets reported that there is a sewer running, the, the sewer is blocked and all of that, we unleash the municipal workers. If the municipal workers are reluctant to go, branches and leaders of the EFF go themselves to go and unblock that sewer. We do it ourselves, without government. We don't say, no, uh, the procedure, we put uh, in the claim, eh, eh, eh. But sewer must get to the same church, it's not hot. But error, let's go and do it. The deputy chairperson of the EFF in Gauteng is the best at leading that. He was now in Atrechville. No one has covered that. You won't cover it. You are waiting for him to do wrong. All of that good he's doing, you will never talk about it. Comrades, um, you know, any formation that creates a multipolar society in which the imperialist forces are isolated. As an anti-imperialist movement, we welcome that. Every country that participates in any multilateral bodies always look after its interest. They first look after their interests before they can look after the interests of other members. So we're not naive about uh, uh, the relationship of these other countries with America, 
and the NATO uh, war alliance. We are, we are quite aware. But we are confident that the leadership, which is at the center of BRICS, particularly China and Russia, and to a particular extent, Brazil, we know that they will not allow the nonsense to happen as it were at that level. So that's where our confidence comes from. So, and that's why the argument in the EFF is that, in our statement is that, guys, the leaders of Africa, let's use our participation in BRICS, let's use our participation to ensure that there is an infrastructural development in Africa, not only in South Africa. Let's use this to connect the continent. Let's use this for more investment in the continent so that by the time the imperialist forces open their eyes, we are a fully developed continent. Because South Africa developed alone in this continent will not be helpful. The last point, uh, former TG, is that the question is, you, are, you got 10%. How are you going to get 50%? Chamisa formed triple CCC now. For the first time it contests elections. Now, it got 44%. I hope that answers your question. It doesn't have to be like, because in the previous election you got 10, you can't get 50. Chamisa triple C in the previous elections got zero. In these elections got 44 so we are even better than Chamisa's Trouble C. Or Regrele 10. Ah, Renaga fell afoot. Then we are done. We are not starting at zero like Chamisa did with Trouble C. We are starting at 10. And we are going forward. We are the only organization that has never lost votes since 2014. Only organization that is not going to lose votes even now. Thanks. Would you have a last round, Hudson? Yeah. Can I see her? One. Power again. Two. And that will be our last round. Three. Three. Of course, Nazi Shazi again from Power 10 News. For the first time, my question won't be directed to Mr. Malik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be directed to Mr. Floyd Shivambu. Um, Mr. Deputy President, um, my question um, for you is, um, I just wanted to find out, um, is, is there life for the EFF after Malema? And um, this question is not an indictment to the current leader of the EFF. Mr. Malema is often uh, um, a very good leader. You know, he's very persuasive and he's done his duty as a leader to grow the party. But my question is, you know, you're often touted as the next CIC in waiting you're touted as the brains of the organization, and you're heading into the third elections, and growth um, is vital for the party uh, to remain strong. But my question is, um, will the EFF be able to survive without Umaliyama at the helm? And um, when will we see, and like I said, this is not an indictment, when will we see the rest of the leadership rise up and take the organization forward? Because even with uh, the successful rally that you guys hosted, uh, the thing that remains in people's minds is Umalim. It's always Umalim and not the organization. So my question, Mr. Floyd Shivambu, do you see the EFF surviving without Umalim in the long run? Thank you very much. Um, hi, uh, Tabisoko again from Eyewitness News. So just a matter of clarity for me, that's all. Um, in the, in the tweet that the EFF released, or the statement, um, I think there was over 400, about 430 of the public representatives who didn't get transports. But I believe the, uh, the president just said that only 210 uh, are being, uh, have been recalled. So I just want to, if you can just clarify um, that, uh, that, uh, that discrepancy. Thank you. Okay, Ndewa again with the SAPC. Uh, Mr. Malema, you spoke about the, the institutions, for instance, referring to, the, to SAP and, and the Public Protector's Office. 
I'm always interested in knowing from politicians in South Africa. What kind of public protector would you prefer to be in office? I mean, I'm saying this against the backdrop of what uh, some people have observed, especially with the few public protectors that we had in the past, starting from Advocate Tulima Donzel, who at some point was criticized by all in sundry, only because there was a finding against a president of the ANC. And then came in uh, Advocate Busiswe M. Kweban. Again, there is a finding that he has against the president of the ANC. And Kolega Kalega Advocate made a finding in support of the president or in favor of the president of the ANC and recently or for some reason has become a darling. So the question is, what makeup of a, a public protector would you prefer as the EFF? And I didn't think about uh, the, the Chamisa and, 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 and the EFF. <laughs> I know you're a political hack, you should know that. I mean, in mathematics, it's only where we have therefore, but in politics, therefore, there is nothing like two plus two, it's four. Three plus one, it's four. Thank you, sir. I know I'm covered. But, but, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Do you know the the EFF is going to outlive all of us. It's going. It's a, even now. Oh, Look, the, the economic freedom fighters is going to outlive all of us. It, it, has, it's, it has gained a life of its own even now. So even what you are saying, uh, the president is leading excellently the organization and is doing extremely very well. A very decisive, focused, uh, an inspirational, persuasive way. But the organization is growing like... Uh, you know, the, this Ipsos research company generated a report which they presented to all of us uh, to illustrate that when we participated in the first elections, the individual leaders of the EFF, because the organization was still young, were much more popular than the organization. But it is now a different story. The organization has gained a life of its own. Look... Uh, in the recent past, this past week, in the University of South Africa, 43,000 students, where we are not involved, none of us here, in the campaigns of the Student Representative Council elections. And 43,000 people voted for the EFF student commands without our participation. So this organization is far, far, far much bigger than all of us as individuals. And that is the organization which we founded 10 years ago that it's an economic emancipation movement that is not just about its individual leaders. It's not a private organization. It's, it's, a, it's an organization of the people. It's an organization which we are going to bequeath to future generations to emancipate ourselves from the neocolonial dominance of the West. And that is what this organization is all about. So if there's one thing which we are rest assured and we, we, we confidently know is that this uh, EFF is going to outlive uh, all of us. So that, that is, I mean, it's finding expression in other parts of the African continent. In Namibia, we've got the economic freedom fighters which ascribes to our leadership here in South Africa. They've got members of parliament in Namibia. We have never been to Namibia to campaign for the EFF. So the, the EFF is an idea who's, which, which is long overdue like, and it's relevant for the lives of our people. And one thing for sure and which we are 100% convinced and we know is that it is going to outlive all of us in terms of what happens. So that is, that is the organization that will, it's an instrument in the hands of our people. It's a fighting weapon that will inspire many generations to come to fight for economic emancipation. Thank you very much, President.
No, thank you very much. Uh, you see, the problem is that money trailing jail in Mokola. Well, now that is in the Zog Mokola's letter. Mokola, and you too, Malema, Omalema, Nian Mokola, when an Abangan Vak, Nian Mokola. And then we want to make us part of that because if you use science, the research of uh, Ipsos said the EFF is now more popular than Malem. <laughs> it's in the research. So, Mara, uh, you know, Ringji Mola Stupu, Mola 15, Nikwa Alexander, we go music. I don't want Malem. Then, Unan or no, that is science. It's done. Uh, this is what people are saying. Arshumishen uh, science, uh, Silemo uh, Power uh, FM. Uh, <laughs> the very sheer signs. Um, 400 to 200 because uh, the, the report was released, names were released, and then people were given an opportunity to argue their case. And I said to you now, there was a person just this morning who came to argue her case. If it was indeed proven beyond a reasonable doubt that this person is right, wouldn't be sitting with 210. It would have been 209 because she must be removed uh, from the list. So we announced the names. You know, one of the things we found is that some of the councillors in the Eastern Cape, they have three months without being paid because municipalities don't have money uh, and salaries are not paid. So such people get removed that you can't expect such a person without their own income to now go and look for uh, buses for the EFF, they are concentrated on trying to resolve their immediate issues. Uh, uh, so uh, there, there's quite a number of such cases and others where there were administrative discrepancies by administrators because now it is the SG who's directly interface with people to want to hear what is your story if you have a story to tell. Uh, and then you make your case and then a decision is made uh, to that effect. So uh, that's where the number then got reduced from 400 to uh, 210. We, 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 we are likely to even have less than that because uh, as people are going to be receiving letters and being told uh, you have to resign, I mean there was a guy um, uh, 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 called uh, uh, Chico, is it? Chico Mkwanas. This one was saying to me, Mkwanazi didn't pay a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept on saying that the whole meeting uh, in CCT. This morning, the SG comes and says, no, Mkwanazi paid a bus and paid it in April. He produced a proof here. The confusion was that they got a collective quotation of 57,000. And then he paid his portion in the 57, his bus was 12,000. So they looked at the POP of 12,000 vis-a-vis the quotation of 50,000 and said, no, this, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> so he came and said, no, look at this. This is us. And then each one of us in this 57 pays this much, and this is my portion. Fortunately, the bus company, we used it. Then we were able to communicate with the bus company, and they said, no, that's authentic. We know that and all of that. Then his name goes off. That's how I'm convinced this morning, because the thing with our people is that the more serious you become, they to start coming out or hey, I bet we never know our demand is just talking. Hey, 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 you, 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 you. Let me send my stuff. So uh, we it's not the the lesser number we get, the more happier we are. We don't want it, this. We don't want it. That's why we kept on making all types of noises for these comrades to comply. <coughs> so it, it doesn't, we don't rejoice in this. But they, there has to be mandate and accountability. We want a public protector that will just comply with the uh, uh, public protector's laws and not be involved in politics. There were public protectors that's why you are starting before, uh, starting with Tulima Donze. There were public protectors before. There was never any problem of that sort. 
and anything of that. So Tulima Donzela made, made her reports. Her reports uh, were challenged in court, and she won. And then that was it. We want a, a public protector that will take decisions, and those decisions must still be challenged. Whether she wins or she doesn't win, there is a recourse. But stick to the rules. Don't be political as a public protector. From where I'm sitting, in all of those interviews, there's no single one who qualifies. By just listening to all those interviews where our TG performed very well in trying to interrogate those people in the best interest of our country, nothing came out. The ANC tried. Even Wabacho Mungwari, public protector, Upatala Sasa, Sasa beneficiaries, Ekaran. I don't know if the ANC did it deliberately uh, in an attempt to make Koleka shine, but she could not shine with the understanding and interpretation of the law. She couldn't. For a young person who should, you know, because of age, do not have a history of struggle credentials and anything of that sort, if you want to engage in that space, it is your intellectual understanding of the law which must make you look smart and everybody should say this is the one so uh, no one no if if uh, they get anyone